Uh, yeah. How are you today? I'm good. Feeling good? Feeling good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything new happened this week? Or? Um, hey uh, guys. Well- <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of BD Weekly. Uh, for those of you who are not sure what this is, this is the show where David and I are going to be bringing you a little bit closer to the specimens housed here at the BD Biodiversity Museum, the research going on behind the scenes, and anything else that we think is cool. So we've been highlighting one organism from each of the museum's six collections. Uh, we highlighted the tetrapod collection that we talked about the blue whale. Uh, we also highlighted the fossil collection that we talked about cyanobacteria. If you haven't seen any of those videos, you can click on the link here or here. Uh, but today, uh, we're talking about the fishes. We're talking about the fishes collection and specifically the porcupine fish. Yeah, so the specimen that we have here is of the species Diodon hystrix, yes. aka the spot finned porcupine fish. Nice. Yeah, and I think we should start our discussion off with a couple of fun facts about this fish. Let's hear it. All right, so uh, one, it's nocturnal. Uh, two, it's kind of a loner. It swims like a very solitary life until mm -hmm. mating season. Sure. Uh, and three is that it's very, very slow, but it has this really good defense mechanism that if a predator does get close to it, it will start gulping in huge amounts of water. Wow. Uh, and it will just balloon up until it is this bobbing sphere covered in these incredibly sharp spines. Oh man. So a predator will be chasing this like, pretty sharp, right? Yeah. <laughs> predator will be chasing this like slow moving, tasty looking fish because the, the spines are not visible at all when it's deflated. And then in about eight to 10 seconds, it takes in a huge amount of water, swells up and suddenly uh, a giant balloon covered in spikes is not so appetizing anymore. I, I gotta say that sounds uh, pretty edgy. Good one, yeah. And so another cool fact about this fish is that if a predator does manage to take a bite, it is going to be ingesting a huge amount of neurotoxin. Okay. So the porcupine fish, their skin, their liver, their gonads, and their organs inside of them, uh, they contain a really, really powerful neurotoxin called tetrodoxin, wow. which is about 1,200 times more toxic than cyanide, which is the stuff that spies take in spy movies, little Whoa, like, capsules. Yeah. cyanide. Yeah, 1,200 times more toxic than cyanide. In this thing? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Um, in one porcupine fish, there's enough of this tetrodoxin to kill 30 humans, and there is no known antidote. Um, but despite this, uh, as you might have heard, uh, in countries such as Japan and China, Porcupine fish and puffer fish meat is actually considered a delicacy. It's called fugu. Um, mm. So the fugu chefs will train for like two years learning how to cut up this fish so that they don't serve neurotoxin to their guests. But about five people a year do die from tetrodoxin poison this way. And dying of a neurotoxin is really not a pleasant death. Yeah, well, obviously looking at this fish, I'm not exactly <laughs> thinking I want to eat this. Um, and I'm, I'm imagining it doesn't even taste that good. Is that right? Yeah, I've, I've never tried it, but apparently the appeal is not really the great taste. Just people like living on the edge. They want to be, they want to be served ha, something. Good. That was good. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, living on the edge. The edge, yeah. Um, yeah, they want to be served something that could potentially be saturated with a neurotoxin. Just wow. like the danger. Um, it'll also cause a minor paralysis. So mm -hmm. you'll feel this kind of weird tingling sensation, which some people get a kick out of. There's actually complaints among fugu enthusiasts when the chefs are too good at their job and they serve them just completely plain, safe fish with no uh, neurotoxic effects. People, people really want the minor paralysis when they yeah. go out for a meal. Yeah. So another cool thing about this neurotoxin is that mm -hmm. the fish actually doesn't make it at all. It's, uh, oh, no. yeah, it's the product of a bacterial colony in its gastrointestinal tract. So porcupine fish will eat uh, sea urchins. <laughs> oh, right there. Yeah, sea urchin. Um, they'll eat sea urchins, they'll eat hard skin mollusks, and when they eat them, the bacteria in and on this food takes up resonance in their uh, GI tract. Um, so this incredibly powerful neurotoxin is actually just the result of a bacterial colonization. Wow, so essentially it gets the toxicity from its diet. Yeah, it doesn't actually make it at all in its tissue, it's just that from what it eats. That is pretty cool, that is pretty cool. Yeah, so porcupine fish that are bred in uh, captivity and given a controlled diet, they won't be poisonous. Wow, yeah, so you were talking a little bit about symbiosis, uh, that's when um, sort of two things depend on each other or yeah. is that? Yeah, so okay. symbiosis comes from a word that just means to live together. Right. So it's a really, really intimate relationship between two species and oftentimes where one or both of them has built their entire lifestyle around the presence of the other. Okay. So you just can't separate them anymore. Oh, cool. You know, if there's one thing I'm gonna learn from this video, it's I'm never trying fugu. <laughs> uh, so unadventurous. People who, who have it and love it, just 
keep doing you. Yeah. I'm going to do me and not <laughs> try it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the other thing you should learn yeah. from this is uh, that sometimes we give these animals just too much credit. Like, what would they be without their bacteria? That. Yeah. <laughs> That's still a lot. Yeah, all right, fine. Fair enough. <laughs> I would still not be attacking that. Fair enough, so, fair enough. Uh, But that's a good point. Yeah. That's, a, that's a fair point. <laughs> well, I think we've said everything we have to say for this video. If there's anything you want to learn more about uh, the porcupine fish or the neurotoxin it produces or uh, symbiotic relationships we have with bacteria, you can check out the links in the description below. Yeah, and make sure that you check back next week because we'll have more stories from the next collection. Okay. Bye. See ya. <laughs>